In all of American automotive history, there are only a handful of names that carry weight, sometimes the world over. Names like Mustang, Wrangler, Corvette. And thanks to hip hop and pop culture of the early 2000s, you can add Escalade to that list too. In fact, this is the only modern Cadillac that has a real name attached to it anymore. And coming from a brand with names like Eldorado and Fleetwood Brougham, that's some pretty high praise. But is Cadillac's biggest and baddest offering really worth the high price tag it commands? Or is it just a gussied up truck? That's what I took the 2017 Escalade for a week to find out. This is your Daily News Autos Review. If there's one word that can sum up the Escalade styling, it's presence. Like it or not, this is one of the most visually impressive and imposing vehicles on the road. With just the right amount of edgy bodywork and chrome detailing to stand out without necessarily shouting. The full height LED taillights and massive chrome grille, brightened up in this instance with the new optional radiant package, are signature staples. But if you look closely enough, you'll be able to spot the panels and proportions shared with the Escalade's more humble platform mates, the Chevrolet Tahoe and GMC Yukon. Still, chrome side blades, massive 22 inch wheels, and those awesome LED headlights work wonders in setting this behemoth apart. And though you're most likely to spot an Escalade in black or white paint, it looks great in real colors too, like this dark Adriatic blue. Inside, a sea of leather, wood, and piano black surfaces hide the Escalade's working class roots, though there's plenty of GM parts bin switch gear to be found upon closer inspection. While Cadillac's center console design is handsome to look at, it's extremely prone to fingerprints and fussy to use while driving. The Yukon and Tahoe both score points here for incorporating conventional knobs and buttons where Cadillac uses capacitive touch panels. I love the look of the optional Kona brown leather seats and open pour wood, though my passengers throughout the week were split on the color's visual appeal. These brown leather thrones are plenty comfortable up front especially with heating and ventilation, not to mention massage if you opt for the top tier platinum trim. The pedals are also adjustable in height for drivers with different size legs, making this thing plenty comfortable on long road trips for drivers of pretty much any size. The complaints come from further back in the Escalade, with legroom diminishing significantly as you move from row to row. Second row passengers have a decent amount of legroom in standard captain's chairs, 39 inches to be exact but not limousine levels like you'd expect from a vehicle so often used as an airport shuttle. If you want true rear seat comfort, opt for something like the Cadillac CT6 sedan with all the bells and whistles. What's worse is when you're forced into the third row seat, which can theoretically hold three occupants, making this a seven passenger vehicle, but even small adults will find themselves uncomfortable with the flat bench, high footwell, and lack of any space below the second row seat because of the live rear axle underneath. For more space, opt for the longer Escalade ESV, which increases third row legroom by almost 10 inches and loads more cargo space to boot. But be aware that choosing the longer Escalade makes it incredibly hard to live with if you ever need to park somewhere with tight spots. A flagship SUV would be a bit of a sham if they didn't throw everything they've got in terms of technology at it. And thankfully, the Escalade has all that and the kitchen sink. The Q infotainment system is much improved over previously infuriating iterations and is fast and responsive, even if it's a bit far away for drivers without above average length arms. The navigation system is accurate too, and thankfully features the ability to enter a destination as you would into Google Maps, saving you the need to go through the tedious step-by-step -step process of other systems. Smartphone aficionados can choose to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto instead of the default system, and GM's excellent optional 4G LTE Wi-Fi is still quite a crowd pleaser, especially with multiple occupants in the vehicle or in areas where your phone might have little or no service. Handy improvements have been made to the Escalade's optional tech, including the somewhat gimmicky but ultimately useful rear camera mirror, available on upper trim levels. With the flip of the mirror-mounted toggle switch, a high-definition wide-angle display of everything behind the vehicle is projected right on the mirror glass. There's also active park assist that can help you steer into parallel or perpendicular spaces on either side of the vehicle. In terms of safety though, the Escalade leaves a bit to be desired, as it only receives a 4-star overall rating from the NHTSA. Side impact scores are all excellent with 5 stars across the board, but front impact scores are all listed at 4 stars, and the rollover rating is just three stars, which is to be expected from a truck this tall. Automatic emergency braking is standard on premium and platinum models, as well as adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning with lane keep assist, 
blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and a backup camera with 360 degree surround vision, all of which are standard on the luxury trim and above. The Escalade uses a live rear axle, which is pretty traditional for a truck-based SUV, and it does have its benefits in terms of towing and hauling. For example, the Escalade can tow about 8,100 pounds with four-wheel drive equipped. However, the Lincoln Navigator, which uses an independent rear suspension setup, can tow about 500 pounds more. And the live rear axle does make things difficult in terms of interior cargo capacity. Incorporating a live rear axle into a vehicle's design means that everything that would normally be shoehorned between all the suspension components have to be built on top of it, making the Escalade's cargo load floor incredibly high at 32.1 inches. And it cuts down on that third row footwell space as I mentioned earlier. That means getting large, heavy items into the rear is much more difficult than it should be for an SUV this large and supposedly utilitarian, and cargo space takes a big hit. There's only 15 cubic feet behind the third row seat, about the same as a Honda Civic. And while lowering the third row gets you a relatively expansive 51.9 cubic feet of space, you've only got room for four occupants, so cross the Escalade off your list if you've got a family of five or more with dreams of even long-ish road trips. There's a definite Jekyll and Hyde effect when it comes to driving the Escalade, but let's start with the good. I absolutely adore this engine. It's a 6.2 liter V8, which makes 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. If that sounds like a lot, it's because it is. And it helps to muscle this over 5,000 pound SUV along to 60 miles an hour in less than six seconds. Gas mileage in the city is poor, but on the highway you can actually do surprisingly well, thanks to GM's cylinder deactivation technology, which shuts down half of the eight cylinders when you're cruising along on the highway. The eight-speed automatic transmission, which is new for the refreshed Escalade, also helps a bit as well. And you'll see sometimes over 20 or 22 miles per gallon on the highway, which bumped my average over the course of about 900 miles up to 18 and a half miles per gallon average. Unfortunately, that's about where the good parts of the Escalade's driving experience end. The ride is relatively quiet, thanks to acoustic glass and some sound deadening efforts, but because this thing has the aerodynamics of a luxury condo building, wind noise can be pretty prominent. What's more is that this Cadillac uses GM's magnetic ride suspension, which in many cars is absolutely fantastic, like the Chevrolet SS that we tested last week. In here though, it doesn't really do much to make up for the fact that there are 22 inch wheels riding down below here. So you feel almost every little bump on the road and there are even some rattles in the cabin because of it. It can also unsettle the Escalade in the corners. So if you're going around a corner at some speed and you end up hitting a series of chatter bumps, the wheels can feel like they're actually losing a little bit of traction and that's because they're bouncing around so much on such big wheels. Frankly, it kind of destroys the ride of what should be one of the most comfortable vehicles on the road, and that makes the experience kind of a little disheartening. At the end of the day, the Escalade's biggest appeal is that, well, it's still pretty badass. There are few cars on the road with this much presence, and when it comes down to it, that's what keeps them flying off dealer lots. But look a bit closer, and the Escalade is a bit of a head scratcher. At over $94,000, my premium luxury tester has almost all the bells and whistles short of the top tier platinum trim. But for just around $82,000, you could have a fully loaded GMC Yukon Denali with almost all of the same options and just a fraction less chrominess. What's more, while it's not as cool as the Escalade, the Lincoln Navigator offers more cargo and towing capacity for a lot less money, even fully loaded, not to mention better ride and handling. And at almost six figures, the Mercedes GLS 550 and even a Range Rover HSE start to look pretty appealing. At its core, the Escalade is a bit limited by its humble pickup truck roots. So it's up to you to decide if you want the most gussied up truck of them all. If it was my money on the line though, I'd probably wait for either a newer Escalade or that Lincoln Navigator that's coming out this year. Well, that's all for now. I'm Brian with the Daily News Autos and we'll see you next time.